Hi guys, I'm Rob Levesque. I was here at your last meeting. Um, just wanted to clarify, is the meeting on, is it 5.15 that it starts or five? No, the meeting starts at five. Okay. The public hearing starts at 5.15. Okay, sorry. No, no, I, I apologize. The reason I ask is I, I don't see one of my staff members that's supposed to be on. I was a little worried I was going to start. <laughs> right, so our secretary's not here either, and believe me, we need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, uh, oh. I'll be making the presentation tonight and then uh, turning it over to Chris, one of our, our, our surveyors and engineers, um, and then he'll, he'll be finishing up. I have a couple, I have one of those nights where one of those uh, unfortunate nights with multiple public hearings. So I'm going to kind of be juggling a little bit. So I apologize ahead of time. We have multiple public hearings too. We're sympathetic. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this modern work world is getting crazier and crazier. You get paid for it. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I do. <laughs> we, we're just doing this for fun, right, Judy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You got a strange idea of fun, Brad. <laughs> I, I take it we don't have any minutes. Maybe we could spend the time talking about when to reschedule the pump house. Yeah, um, Rob, just one thing I wanted to check you. Um, I yes, mentioned sir. that um, you're going to have to get the driveway permit from the uh, select board. Yes, sir. And just want to make sure you guys were aware of that. We are, and um, we'll be able to speak to that tonight. We we uh, looked at uh, some of the driveway information. I don't want to talk too much before the hearings, but um, yeah, we will be prepared okay. to, to address that tonight, sir. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. I I need to try and explain about the pump house, and I wish I actually, I wish I could. I sent Mary and Lynn an email last Tuesday with the final legal ad saying it's ready to go. Neither of them got it. Mm. My email program says that it was sent. Um, it disappeared into cyberspace somewhere. So that's why it didn't get posted. And Wayne is sympathetic, I guess. When you're an applicant, a supplicant, you tends to happen that way. But he could come the 25th, which would be our normal May meeting. And there's time to post for that. Uh, do we have time to post for the 20th? Or is that not, not, not going to make that much difference? The 20th. Or just a week from. You mean the 18th? I've got. This is April, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So are so we talking next, about next Tuesday is would be the twentieth? No, next Tuesday would be the eleventh of May. We no, no, were we were going to have it on the thirteenth. No, we were going to have it on the eleventh of May. Mm -hmm. We also have, we have. That's the day we have FERCOG coming. And, I mean, I and we now also have Mustang then. So we have to have that meeting. And I think once every two weeks is enough. <laughs> so yeah. This yeah. is getting to be, this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> but next Tuesday's the fourth. Don't push it, Grant. Right. No, I'm not. Uh, well, there's not going. time. There's not time to advertised for the 11th. So we obviously can't do anything before then. Um, so yeah, so Judy, had, you're saying we can't do it on the 11th? No, I mean, that's the problem. The ad would have had to be in last Thursday. Okay. And, and it didn't make it. OK, so we'll do it on the 25th of May? That would be the, lot, the normal meeting date. And Wayne can come then. Well, it would be nice to gain a couple of weeks on the schedule, but I think for our own sanity, we probably uh, should go ahead and stick with the 25th. Okay, I'll change the ad <laughs> and check just... whether they got it or not. I, I still don't understand what happened, but anyway. 
And if it would be helpful for me to extend access to the to the OneDrive to others so they could look in folders and I don't know if there's an, another backup. They still, they still have to know to look. Yeah, they do have to know to look. I mean. Yeah. I think we let's do a little bit of other. Skip, are you ready to uh, tell us what you'd like to do? Hi. Uh, Good evening, thank you, sure. Um, we'd like to expand, um, put up a, a third building on our property on 82 State Road. Uh, the third building would be identical to the red production building that is currently there. Uh, it would be about 40 feet to the east of the existing building. It would uh, honor all of the uh, setbacks and, uh, on the first application. Um, and I guess I'm in front of the board tonight to ask for a waiver of site plan review as uh, use will not be, it will not change at all and the building will be identical to what's already there in the red building. Do you anticipate uh, more traffic? No, it would not um, it would not change the traffic patterns at all that would be coming and going uh, without the building. I think maybe you better describe, not everybody was with us when we did the first site plan. So you maybe need to tell the name of your business and. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the, the business is Underground su Supply. Um, we currently precast concrete septic tanks um, on 82 State Road. Um, we also wholesale and distribute uh, plastic pipes um, and the Existing buildings are used, uh, the red building, the larger of the two buildings is used exclusively for the production of septic tanks at this time. Uh, the building, the beige building to the north um, is office and warehouse for um, accessories and fittings for septic materials. Um, we've kind of in, in the uh, pleasurable position in that a lot of our com competitions retiring and not being replaced uh, so there's a demand for us to uh, increase our, our precast operation. Uh, we just sold the building we came from in Leeds. Um, we contemplated reopening that, but managing buildings in two different locations uh, was proving hard. So uh, we decided to, if we could, consolidate in, in Waitley. Remind me how big the lot is. Uh, four acres. The uh, the new building would be about 7,000 square feet. I think they're both 7,200 if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember the lot coverage ratio for commercial district. Um, I'm gonna share my screen because I've got a, a uh, Google Earth street view, so. Are you able to, Don, or am I? I'm not seeing a. <laughs> no, it says one participant can share your time. You should be able to. Oh, so you just disabled it. No, I didn't do anything. Okay, well, can you enable it? It was clicked. Just going to go into advanced. Ah, only the host. All participants. There you go. Okay. So this is um. This is the building. This is uh, your office. Well, you, you explain this, Skip. Correct. Correct. That's office and warehouse. Correct. The building on the right, the red one, is the current production facility. And you can see these trees back here. This would be parallel and and uh, aligned with this building here. So it'd just be the exact exactly. same thing. Move what thirty extra feet? Forty feet. I'd, we'd leave forty feet between the two buildings, but maintain the same. Uh, we're actually twenty five feet off the pro uh, property line, uh, going straight back towards the railroad tracks. And as I recall, we didn't have any objections from the neighbors to the north. And is that still true? That's true. Yep, I have. Uh, I sent kind of a petition type thing from three of the four uh, 
uh, abutting businesses. Uh, I have yet to be able to run down the owner of Orchard Trailer. He's uh, not not around very often. Uh, they had absolutely no problem at all last time. Correct. Would this involve a lot of extra water use? Uh, no. Lot coverage is 50% in commercial, for commercial use. So I think that's not an issue. Uh, does anybody uh, from the public got an opinion on this? Just while unofficially. Any opinion? I move, Any I move we waive the public hearing, the formal site plan review. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Um, Mary, this is 82 State Road. 82, okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he said, 82? Yes, correct. Okay, I'll do a roll call. Don, yes. Sarah? Yes. Judy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brant? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Thank you, Skip. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice evening. Yeah. And now it's 5.15. That was a good use of time. Excuse me, could I, could, could I just, could I have Skip's last name, please? I'm sorry. I was uh, Goodridge, G-O-O-D-R-I-D-G-E. And legally, I'm a George, just for the record. Oh, okay. <laughs> The other okay. thing we did, but before you got here, Mary, is schedule the pump house hearing for the 25th of May. So I will get you a revised legal ad. May 25th. Okay. JD is looking to say something. Yes, please. Um, is regarding underground supply, the building inspector, I'm going to be his contractor pulling the permits for it. And Jim Hawkins asked for a site plan review. What you skipped us went through with you folks. I'll send him a letter. Uh, you'll send him a letter. That's why I want to know how that works out. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Have a nice evening, y'all. All right. All right, I've shown 515. I'm going to open the public hearing. Um, Rob, do you want to? Yes, sir. Uh, this? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, again, for the record, I'm Rob Levesque from our Levesque Associates. Here with me this evening is Chris Carney. He's one of our PLSs and, and engineers in the office. Uh, Chris, We'll be taking over the presentation uh, partway through, uh, as I have another meeting tonight, as mentioned earlier. Um, so um, first and foremost, uh, wanted to be uh, okay with the chair. I'd like to share the, the screen again. And then uh, Chris, do you, do you have uh, plans handy to share as I'll be hopping off? He's muted. Yep, he'll be. Uh... Yep, I have all the plans ready, ready to go. Great. Okay. So, um, so just, I'll just kind of, if you want to just bring up the, the main site plan, I'll, what I'll do guys is I'll, I'll make a uh, kind of a, an overview from last time, and then we can discuss a little bit about our meeting with the Zoning Board of Appeals, if you'd like, and then I'll probably hand it over to Chris for some of the technical details, um, if that, if that's okay. Thanks, Chris. Um, so, hopefully everyone's looking at the proposed self-storage facility plans. This is our cover sheet. Uh, if we can go to the proposed sheet, uh, sheet, uh, I think it's C3. Uh, yeah, four, thanks. Um, so again, as, as discussed with the planning board, uh, we have a proposed uh, self-storage facility that includes um, a, uh, a portion of, uh, actually the center building will be climate controlled, three-story building, um, approximately 60,000 square feet, um, and two adjacent buildings that would be more of your traditional um, storage buildings, 10 by 20s, 10 by 10s, that, that, that type of thing. Um, and those would be kind of front loaded um, garage style storage units that are, that are not climate controlled. 
we have um, a stormwater drainage system associated with the impervious surface that we have to have for the construction. We have about a 30 foot drive aisle between the buildings. We have uh, one stormwater basin just off to the left where Chris was showing, and then one just to the north uh, right there. Uh, we also have a, uh, on the bottom right hand corner of the buildings, there is a uh, septic system that's proposed. That'll be right in that grassed area uh, just to the left of his hand. Thanks, Chris. That's the, uh, that's the grading plan. That, that's a mounted, slightly mounted septic system there. Um, and then obviously you see the grading for the stormwater basins and the roadways. Uh, as mentioned last time, we are replacing a culvert. There was some question uh, at the Zoning Board of Appeals. I believe there was an abutter, a, a couple of abutters that were present. In addition to the abutters, uh, there was an attorney representing one of the abutters and they posed some pretty good questions. Um, one was about the replacement of the culvert and the potential effects on the other downstream culverts that would not be replaced. So I think we have some good information uh, on that tonight that Chris would be happy to share. Um, and then in addition, we, uh, we, we, I think we talked about the proximity of the driveway to the property line. Uh, the driveway curb cut, I believe meets the requirements um, as does the, the driveway location. So I think we're gonna be okay. I think we're all set with the uh, DPW submission uh, in the ZBA filing, there was also uh, a question about um, the separation between driveways. Um, and it actually, uh, if you look at the details, there's a 500 foot separation requirement from driveway to driveway. And arguably um, that would not apply here as this is an existing driveway one. And, and two, you are allowed to have at least one driveway to your property. As you can imagine, if you could not get into your property, um, it would be a take. So. The way it's written is when you have two entrances, um, there are some subsections that require, yeah, I think you just had it actually, Chris. Uh, yeah, thank you. So um, not that I wanna get too far in the weeds here, but there was a question raised by the attorney and essentially the uh, 500 foot separation would be under item number three, um, where it says there shall not be more than two driveways. And then the subsection for the 500 foot is part A. So with that, um, you know, I think that would clarify the question raised by the ZBA uh, and the driveway itself. I believe we, we meet the driveway requirements as it's, uh, you know, comes out onto state road um, and have the separation that we need. And we're not that close, you know, we're really not close to the, to the property line at that point. There was also uh, some questions related to visibility. It is a pretty, pretty sizable building. So there was some questions. Um, and we offered the ZBA that we would do a site visit, which will happen this Saturday. So um, should some of the planning board members uh, feel they need to understand this a little bit better, you're more than welcome to join us. And I would have to confirm the time. I think uh, Mr. Salura might know the time. Uh, Todd, do you have that in front of you? It's 11 o'clock this Saturday. So we will be on site 11 o'clock on Saturday. We have uh, stakes that we've, we're at least by Saturday, they'll be placed at the corners of the buildings, uh, as well as um, there's a sign location out front that was in question at the ZBA hearing. And there was also uh, a question related to the proximity of the building and the driveway to the property line. Part of that question, if we go to the grading plan, Chris, part of that question was related to how the site would drain and the, um, the drainage that for that roadway, and Chris can get into these details specifically, but the drainage for the roadway, Chris designed, and Chris and Philippe designed this to run um, towards the north so that there would be really, the only water that will be going to the neighbor we, uh, would be um, what falls outside the curb, which is already, it's already pervious and will remain pervious uh, and vegetated uh, beyond the driveway. So, um, I could be, I could probably have a few minutes to answer any questions you may have for me. Um, and then Chris is more than uh, versed on this as he was the, was the lead designer on this. Uh, one of the things we asked for uh, was a uh, aerial photograph with the, the, the abutters buildings. Yes, yep. sir. Uh, yep. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I probably should have brought that up early. So we did, um, we did put that together. So what you see is an aerial photograph. It was taken early in the season, so it's not real green. But if we zoom in on the subject site, you'll see that there is a, the locust is hatched. And the, there's a, the question, the, the abutters that were at least that meeting, they may be on tonight, um, I believe were uh, the residents at 54 State Road. 
I apologize a little bit because our label is kind of masking the pro the property a little bit. But if we go, if we zoom in on 54 State Road, Chris, you'll see that there is a house and there's also an outbuilding to the north, um, maybe a barn or something. Uh, that and you know, there's a house there. Looks like there's two houses, and then there's also uh, the outbuilding. So there was some question about what would be visible from the house and from the outbuilding. So we'll be exploring that on um, on Saturday. And if uh, there's some reason that we need to uh, enhance our, our buffering, we're certainly going to be looking at that closely, as will, I believe, the ZBA. And, and if anybody wants to come, you can make sure we show that to you as well. Um, if we zoom out again real quick, um, there was another residence to the north of the property, um, just kind of north west i'll call it and that i think is 50 something there too yeah right there chris thank you um so that's resident 64 again we're masking it a little bit so i think we gotta work on our text masking text masking but um you can see the house underneath and the, and the, the garage to the north um, there is some vegetation and a stream and then there's a significant amount of vegetation between our development in that house. So that should be pretty well screened, um, but we'll be looking that, at that as well. So we can kind of see where the, the corner stakes are and then kind of look through. And um, I believe at least the ZBA and, and potentially your planning board would want to make sure that we're, you know, no one's really staring at this thing. The nice thing is it's located um, back off the road. Um, generally, I think we can screen it from these two residences and then everything else is either commercial or a highway. Um, and again, it will be pretty well hidden from the road other than the, than the sign, so. Now you've already got some, a lot of coniferous trees in there, maybe. We do, we're gonna try to maintain as much as possible. Yeah. For sure. Maybe plant a couple more near the property line that which you really screen it from the north. Yep, I think we can do a good job of that. And Mr. Salor is committed to, to doing that as well. So with that, if it's okay, folks, if you have any more technical questions, Chris is more than capable of answering those. Um, and I really appreciate your time. And um, Chris will take it from here. Thank you, folks. Okay, Thank thanks. You. Thanks, Rob. So my name is Chris Kearney. I work as a land surveyor and civil engineer at R. Lebeck Associates with uh, Rob Lebeck. Uh, I was a lead designer on this. And so I think I can answer any technical questions you have about the site. Uh, this plan set uh, is the plan set that was submitted as part of the original application. There will be a few revisions that need to be made to this plan set as we move forward in the permitting process. Uh, one of them will be the location of the gate uh, that is shown on sheet C4, and it is shown um, here. Uh, due to some concerns about vehicles coming into the driveway and parking here and being far enough away from the, the road where they are not visible, uh, the the gate, new proposed gate location will be somewhere in this front area. Uh, the next major revision that'll come uh, will be a grading revision. The wetland replication area shown here will also become the site of compensatory storage. These are mostly conservation commission issues. Uh, we have done a floodplain analysis and uh, came up with a flood elevation for this property, both an existing flood elevation and a proposed flood elevation because the, the way this water shed acts and the way this waterway acts will change uh, after construction, uh, change for the better. Uh, but th those revisions will are currently pending, but they will take place in this general area. It would be a removal of soil in, turn, in order to offset some additional soils in this area. Again, though, that's going to be more of a conservation driven issue. I don't think there'll be any planning board regulations that will apply to uh, the regrading in this area. Unfortunately, it is close to a wetland area, so we'll have to work closely with the Conservation Commission in order to uh, design this to their satisfaction. Um, as Rob had mentioned, there were some questions about the driveway and driveway entrance. Um, the, the goal of our design process for this site was to minimize site disturbance. We understand there's a existing wetland and waterway very close uh, to the uh, route five and 10, very close to the frontage. And in order to get to the usable part of this property, we'll need to cross that wetland crossing. Currently it's a 36 inch cast iron pipe and it connects uh, one 
uh, marshland to the down gradient streamland here. And that culvert, the current one is undersized so that during large storm events, it can back up. And when we analyze the FEMA flood, the seven inch flood event, that's a, a flood or storm event larger than the 100 year storm. When we analyze that, we realize that the existing woods road will become overtopped during a large storm event and water would flow over the existing woods road and, and enter um, the waterway to the south. That becomes a problem in, in many different ways. One of them is it, it causes a sort of a mass inundation, a large peak flow. So as you can imagine, what happens is this pond starts getting larger and larger and larger until it finally overtops and creates a cascade over this wood road down to the south. So it, it, it actually ends up causing a, a higher flood potential in existing conditions than in proposed conditions. Proposed conditions, when I get to the last sheet of the plan set, we'll see the new proposed wetland crossing. And, and it is an open box culvert. Uh, the dark shaded line represents the existing 36 inch cast iron pipe. And then the, this, uh, these are erosion control barriers, but right down this line and this line would be the edge of a concrete wall. And uh, for all intents and purposes, it, it would really look like a bridge uh, to, to the layman. It, it will be open on the bottom so the water can travel through a natural stream bed and exit uh, to the south. The width of this and, and the, the whole design of this is based on mass DEP regulations. And they have a, a couple different thresholds. We were able to design this to the optimal condition, meaning not, not the required condition and not even the average condition, but the op, what mass DEP considers an optimal condition. And the purpose of that is to not only allow water to pass through this, but to allow wildlife to pass through this wetland crossing in order to keep uh, the two wetland areas combined that, that way different amphibians and, and even larger mammals can cross under the road safely uh, versus having to go up a bank over a woods road and down another bank. Uh, because of the flows through the culvert, uh, no salamanders or other amphibians would be able to pass through, that, through the culvert. So it really creates two segregated wetland areas that, that after this project will become one with essentially a wildlife corridor passing between the road. Uh, this, this is a large improvement over the existing conditions. The concerns with, with, add, with changing the way uh, water flows is downstream flooding. Uh, after doing the analysis on the floodplain, we were able to determine that peak flow rates actually reduce in the FEMA flood event because instead of having this overtopping scenario, water is just continually able to flow through this and it never ponds high enough to reach the top of the road. In fact, as you, you I'll zoom in on this, um, the flood elevation for existing conditions was about 169 feet. And you can see 169 feet would be right here. And you can see that, that it would, this is existing grade. So the 169 foot flood makes for a large area of uh, overtopping of the woods road. Um, post conditions, that flood elevation lowers to 168 feet and really all the water, the, the highest elevation, even in a storm event larger than the 100 year storm event, no water would ever reach the top of the culvert or overtop the road. It would be contained and limited to um, our model would show it at the 168 foot contour level right here. Uh, so that, that flow change it allows water to pass through this culvert um, uniformly with no cascade events, which really can help minimize downstream flooding. Uh, it's probably counterintuitive and we never really know how these things will pan out until we run the analysis. Uh, but we, we were able to do a very thorough analysis on this and uh, we analyzed about over 9 million square feet of land, the tributary area to this wetland, modeled all the surface covers. Oh, I'll stop the share here. We were able to model all the surface covers for this catchment area. 
So paved areas were given a curved number as well as woods and grass areas were given curved numbers to uh, model how much water is entering that waterway, uh, followed by a um, using <coughs> LIDAR topography from uh, mass GIS. We, able, we were able to build a ponding model so that um, we could see different flood stages and how much water was held behind the culvert and how much water would overtop that culvert. And so we ran that both in a pre and a post development flow. So one showing the existing culvert with how much ponding we expect behind it. That was again to about 169 feet would be the base foot elevation. And then after development, that ponding area is reduced to approximately 168 feet, about one foot lower. It's not a hugely significant change, but it is a reduction in the flood in the area and a reduction of that peak flow rate. So I think we can say downstream flooding shouldn't be affected from this development. In, in order to say that very confidently, more analysis would need to be done. But uh, at this point, we can say fairly surely that uh, there is no downstream effects on the proposed culvert for the FEMA flood event. Looking at different flood events may have different impacts. Uh, so I think I've probably gone off enough on stormwater. Uh, that's really where I really enjoy the analysis on these types of projects. So I tend to over do it on, on this part of the presentation. But, um, I think that's gonna really wrap it up. The, the driveway, as Rob had mentioned, um, there are some DPW driveway bylaws that don't show up in uh, Waitley zoning bylaws. One of them being the 20 foot offset from the driveway to the property line. Um, that's something that we'll need to petition with the DPW and possibly the Board of Selectmen in order to make sure they will approve the location of the driveway. But regardless of their opinion, um, you can still press forward, I believe, in a determination on this uh, project without a Board of Selectmen or DPW recommendation to the driveway. I think that your approval of this project would go a long way in helping the Board of Selectmen make a, an appropriate decision for this property. Uh, there is definitely a bit of Conservation Commission work as we, now that we have a base flood elevation, we'll have compensatory storage areas and we'll submit a formal NOI both to your Conservation Commission and to Mass DEP because of our location uh, in wetland buffers and riverfront areas. Uh, so those submittals are. Chris, we will. One of the things we would probably do would be to um, ha have a condition that we have a letter of approval for the uh, driveway. So that would cover that. And that letter of approval coming from DPW or, or the Board of Selectmen, I believe. Oh, for the Whiteley, yeah, the Board of Selectmen are the, are the people who issue that permit. Yep. Okay. So, yes, it, it seems like they are given leeway to make these changes uh, to the 20 foot offset from property line to driveway. Um, if, if you would like that first, that, that's, you know, that, that's fine. If you have any opinions as far as this project is concerned, I think it might be helpful for the Board of Selectmen to hear that this project is generally conformant with town regulations and a positive thing for the town of Wheatley. We will see that. Excuse yeah, I will, uh, when we finish this meeting, I will uh, let them know basically what our opinions were. Great. And again, as Robin mentioned, we are able to, I can't speak directly for Todd, but there is a fence proposed along that property line in order to shield uh, parking areas. <laughs> But additional plantings, as suggested, along the southerly property line, Arbor Vitae along this way, along with extending this fence uh, to, to the location that you feel appropriate, I think that could be accomplished uh, in order to buffer this driveway adequately so that the proximity of the driveway to the property line uh, isn't a concern to your support of selectmen. Okay. 
Right. Is there any consideration of using native species there? I mean, Arborvitae has a problem with deer, and uh, and we've had trouble with Arborvitae around around the town on various projects. Is there any alternative uh, to Arborvitae? Arborvitae? There, there definitely are alternatives. Arborvitae are definitely the typical because they are very dense, uh, and um, their growth width is minimal. Uh, that I'm said, afraid we the board is allergic to Arborvitae. Yeah, and, and so am I personally. They're not my favorite plant, so I think we would be able to find an alternative species. I think any. we would require some mixed plantings. Mixed plantings, uh, if native, there's any species native that, and deer resistant, but native deer resistant. But you know, I'm wondering if it it sounds as though obviously you don't have ZBA approval yet, and you don't have. Conservation Commission or Select Board, I'm thinking that maybe we should participate in this site walk on Saturday before we go too far about specifying conditions. Excellent. I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that. That was, I went to the ZBA last week. That was on my agenda from Saturday. They're also doing a site walk for urban grown. How wheelchair accessible is that wood road right now, Chris? Uh, wheelchair accessible? I would say it is not. It, it, there's no pavement, so. It, well, I, I can get. Pavement. I can get on. Um, you know, sort of gravel, but. If it's oh, for, uh, for yourself, um, yeah, a, a large wheel scooter, a, a, a pickup truck with two wheel drive will make it up that road. Donald, you're welcome to come to uh, our property line too. We're on the south of that site. Thank you. That's at 11 o'clock on Saturday. 11 this Saturday. As you can be way too much homework. Well, I, I suggest we continue the hearing till we have new now a nice new slot on the eleventh, and and participate in the site walk. That sounds good to me. That would just be a short short meeting at that point with additional questions. As far as I'm concerned, you, Judy. Well, it depends on neighbors and public and, but. Okay. Um, unless there are any objections, I'm gonna continue the public hearing until either the 11th or the 25th of May to be determined. Does that sound about right? Yeah, we have to, we have to give a specific date tonight. Okay, well, let's do a straw poll about having a meeting on the 11th then. Uh, I'm okay with it, Sarah. I am, what else is on? We got the floodplain stuff with uh, Bergbog on the 11th. Yeah, and shoot, I didn't bring that. But not a whole lot. Is that Mustang or is that? There's one other thing, but I don't think we got Mustang. Is that we we took the pump? We, I guess the other thing was the pump house. Brent, I'm fine with the 11th. Yeah, though I thought we couldn't do the pump house on the 11th. I thought we no, had, we can't. But we yeah. can do this. We can't. That's why we have yeah. this space. Right. Right. Tom, you okay? I'm good. All right. So we, we'll officially make it. Continue until the 11th, if that's okay with you, Chris. Yep, that is okay. Okay. All right, well, thank you for the, the presentation and we'll see you on the 11th. My pleasure, thank you very much for your time. Oh, uh, never mind. Um, there'll be room for additional comments when we continue this on the 11th, in case anybody didn't have, didn't say anything they didn't want. Um, all right, next thing on the agenda is um, 
I the wrong one. Egypt Road. Egypt Road. So, um, what time did we? What, what, 12 45. 12 35? 5 okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got 5 43. So is there anyone from the public here to speak to the previous to um, the sovereign builder issue if we have two or three minutes? I think since they've gone, we probably shouldn't. Okay, fair enough. Good idea, but <laughs> you almost got in, Megan. Megan was so ready. I was like, wait, are we, are we all, <laughs> like, I wasn't sure. <laughs> we had started to walk away from the computer and then <laughs> we'll wait then. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll see you on the 11th then. Saturday. Yeah. Or Saturday for now. <laughs> oh, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened with urban grown at the ZBA, Mary? Well, that was or, or Sarah. Sarah's got a better description. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> Sarah. You take it. <laughs> Thanks for being recorded. I'll refrain. Um, uh, Scott Jackson did the favor of joining um, the meeting, and um, Bob Bob led it, um, and let Scott chip in that there has been a variety of wetland studies, engineered studies on that property. And Scott very much has had at least three projects go because it is determined as a wetland. Um, Dr. Hebert proposed that they would be doing some drainage and um, Scott gave him the definition of a wetland, what a wetland really makes up a wetland. It was. I was very entertained. Um, and then the other thing that was brought up is that across the street um, is DCR land. Um, so the issue isn't just that it was Tritown, but it's also that directly across five and 10 is conservation and, rec and recreation land, which is public recreation land, knowing my son just got a nice turkey today. So that kind of recreation that is regularly used so Dr. Hebert is, Herbert is going to continue to think about it, whether, because Scott came on as a favor to really suggest that he withdraw, um, and Dr. Herbert is still considering it, so. Did they have plans? No, something he had created. He has not yet had luck getting an engineer to draw the plans. He's working on that, so still. Thank you. That is at 10 a.m. There is going to be a site walk, as far as I know. So that one is pretty evident from the road. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but one thing about that is that's when the diner is shut down for the filming of, I believe, Dexter. So hot times in Whiteley. <laughs> All right. Well, that killed a few minutes and it is now 545. We'll open the public hearing on Egypt Road, changing uh, from AR1 to commercial. I don't know the lot number, JD. Mm, I've got it somewhere. Map six, lot okay. four, dash yeah. three. So JD, why don't you take the, the forefront? Okay. The fares are logged in too, but they don't have video. So, I want to purchase the property from Walter and Richard Thayer, and I want to put up a shop for my business. It'd be a nice steel building, no outside storage, no customers, no deliveries. We have all of our stuff delivered to job sites. Stuff doesn't come back. Um, just a place to run my company. And the land is pretty useless for a residential use because the town water doesn't go to it. Um, it's right next to the railroad. It's swamp across the street. There's, it's useless. No one, Walter's been trying to sell the land for a building lot and no one wants to buy it. 
but it'd be a good use for me. It's right next to Muffins Market and EJ Prescott and uh, Duso Trucking. I've talked to the neighbors. I've talked to Mr. Sear, who lives across the street, and he was very positive about it. He said, that's great use for it. I'm glad to have you. Mr. Thayer lives next door. Um, I've talked to um, Mr. Pitts, who owns Duso, I mean, uh, Amherst Trucking, and he's very positive. I talked to uh, um, uh, Mr. Corza that owns Muffins Market. He was very positive about it, so that was a great thing. Um, I have not been able to reach the, the neighbor that was be, owns behind me, the Cooks, or Mr. Korpieski. But it's it's a good use for the town. Low impact, no customers. I only have a handful of employees, and I'll get my company out of my backyard into a commercial place where it should be. Um, one of the things that we hear pretty often on commercials or on building projects and so forth is um, a bunch of diesel trucks taken off out of there at 7 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. I don't have any heavy trucks. <laughs> I have five pickup trucks. That's all I have. All right. Yeah, None of them are diesel, are they? They are, but there's quieter than my gas trucks. Okay. They're just pickup trucks. We don't start work till seven o'clock, 7.30 in the morning, and we don't really work weekends. We're home by four o'clock. Um, Mr. Sears said to me, as long as I don't hear backup alarms at 5 a.m., I'm fine. I don't have anything with a backup alarm. It's not my business. We're, we're not in the trucking business. We're home builders. That's it. I think we should remember that we're talking about a zoning change that will apply yeah. to people, all sorts of people. If, if JD decides to sell his property, it could be yep. used for something else. I mean, we obviously want to think about the current use, but it's a more substantive change than just, just a site plan review, I guess. Mm -hmm. well, the, the good thing about that is that uh, we've already got a little commercial center going going there and to have a little bit of expansion would in my mind would not be a bad thing the tax yeah. revenue would be, would be nice for the town well it is adjacent to other commercial property and jd is right about the railroad track um, it seems like a logical site to be commercially zoned if the neighbors are not opposed and looking at the vast number of them here to comment tonight, I take it that that's the case. Um, does anybody from the public have any concerns or comments? Doesn't sound like it. Um, anybody on the board have any concerns? No concerns for me. It sounds right down the street from where I live. JD, how, um, sorry, I'm not looking at it. How large is that um, property? It's 1.7 acres and less than an acre of it is actually usable because the rest is all wetlands. Okay, and Richie is right next to it? Yeah, Richie, Walter and Richie owned the property from the railroad tracks all the way to Long Plain Road and then they right. subdivided it. So yeah, Richie is the next door neighbor. Okay, and a, okay, so that is, so there's open lots after that, after the new house, right? The, this property would go from the railroad tracks to Richie's property line. And then there's his house. And I think there's another lot. And then Mr. Labreck goes after that. Okay. When so the big, the big swath of trees between where it's cleared right now in Richie's house, those trees have to stay because that wetland's in there. So it acts as a buffer for Mr. Sear. Because Mr. Sear said to me, he's like, I can't even see it from my house. And I can't cut those trees or anything because it's all wetlands. It can't be impacted. Okay. So it maintains that buffer to the residences, the residences down Egypt Road. Right. I mean, you get more noise on that piece of property you're proposing from Amherst Trucking than they... Yes. Yeah. Okay. And all the trucks at EJ Prescott and the train that goes by many times a day, 
yeah. My same train. <laughs> uh, good. And across the street, because you're on the south side, on the mm -hmm. north side, is there anything across? No, Mr. Sear owns that property. It's all wetland. He can't do anything with okay. it. Okay. So that cannot become a house. No, it can't. Yeah. I went to see him first and talked about it, and he said he had no objections whatsoever. So. Good. Nice. Hey, are you going to have offices there? To be determined, right now I have a little home office here. It's possible I'm going to have a little office for myself there, but there's no full time staff that's, it's not a staffed office. Mm -hmm. I anticipate a building that I'm going to have my equipment in, mm, tool storage. You know, I, I don't do much mill work. I outsource it because it's cheaper to outsource it. All my material gets delivered to job sites. It's more getting like my trailers and my scaffolding and my concrete formed and my saws. Like I have eight chop saws, six table saws, five air compressors. I have so much stuff. I just need to get all under one roof. That's my intention. And I would like to have a building that from the front is one story, very pleasing to look at it with nice landscaping in the front and no, you don't see anything. I'll park my trailers behind it. So you can't see anything from the front. So it's nice, nice the neighborhood and then I don't have to worry about theft and stuff too. Thanks. Okay, well, I've got a, um, the, the, the uh, town tax map. So I'm gonna bring that up. Okay. Okay, so this is, this is a lot we're talking about right in here. Correct. Uh, railroad tracks. New That's Mr. Park. Thayer right there. Yep. And this is this this is the one that goes all the way over to. Um, yeah, the Cooks own that. Yep. So you can see that. That goes to that big house on Long Plain. No. Okay. No. Different. Yeah, the Cooks. That was um, she was married to Richie Allard. It's okay. a little house set back in the woods. It's just lie here. Thank you. Yeah. There's something. Uh, there's a house in there. Yeah, that's the cook's house. Yep. I went to school with their daughter. So, um, you plan on doing any planning or anything in there? I, I don't really see a problem, but. Uh, the, the usable footprint is not that big in terms of the what I can build and everything. So, where you see where it's cleared right now is pretty much, I have a 50 foot setback off the street anyways, I have to maintain. So I anticipate having a little parking area in the front and then some storage in the back. Well, we get to ask him these things at the site plan review, right? Correct, yeah, this is just to change the zoning. This, and is, then I this is the zoning. That stuff. Which this has to go to town meeting and get approved anyways, right? Yep, two yeah. thirds vote. Well, hearing no objections, I would entertain a motion to. Uh, I think you need to close close the public hearing first, though. Close the public hearing. Okay, public hearing is closed at uh, five fifty-five. In our discussion, anybody else have anything to add? I guess just on Judy's point that this is. Uh, this has future implications. I've been sort of trying to run through my mind the worst case scenario, right? After JD is done and sometime in the future, like what could be done on this land and would that be all that bad? And I'm so far not coming up with a worst case scenario that given that nobody would be across the street and there wouldn't be a future resident, you know, it's not going to be like a Home Depot that goes in there or a Dollar General. <laughs> um, so, yeah. If it's a ch and if it's a change of use, you need a special permit and or you need a, I'm sorry, site plan review and perhaps a, I don't have to check about the special permit, but certainly site plan yeah. review. Yeah, so this seems, doesn't seem like a bad deal. You JD, you're, already, JD, you're already the worst case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> a dollar general, worst case, small dollar general. Um, I'm, 
That's right. It's That's not right. really appealing for a retail use there in the commercial zone because yeah. it's not going to be a convenience store or something else there, just the oh, location. Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. It's off the beat. There. Okay. I can look further uh, in the, into the future, JD. Yeah. <laughs> when this gets paved, I can just see the, the line going in there for Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I move we change the zoning to commercial from agricultural residential. I'll second that. Okay, roll call vote, Sarah. Aye. Don, aye. Brant? Aye. Tom? Aye. Judy? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, JD. What happens next, Don? Um, I guess it has to go to town meeting. Okay. Does the selectman have to approve it too or no? They have to approve the items going on the warrant. Um, okay. Uh, normally, they don't discuss them. I think if they'd had any concerns, they would be here tonight. Okay. So we just wait till June and then go from there, I guess. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Thank you. Bye. We're managing our time very well tonight. Okay. Um, so the case. So this is the uh, site plan amendments. I think that's about it. So um, I've got those ready to go. I guess I have a question that goes back to Salura, but it kind of is more protocol. Um, floodplain, because they're very much talking about where the river is and stuff, because we don't have, do we need to look at floodplain stuff for that? That will have to pass conservation, I think, anyway. It's really under their purview? Yeah. Okay. Um, I would definitely have that as being one of the conditions that we have a letter from conservation or approval. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to share this screen. Okay, so this is the um, site plan. Um, Don, we have a public hearing on the bylaws. Oh, sorry. Skipped right over it. Wishful right. thinking. Wishful thinking. Yeah. Let's, um, what time is that for? Six? Mm hmm. Okay. Well, it's six or one. So we'll open the public hearing for changes in the bylaw. I don't see anybody in the meeting except for us. Mary Byrne leave. Oh, Mary Byrne. Well, Mary Byrne is not a resident, I don't think. Uh, no, I'm not a resident with the Greenfield Recorder. I Don, can you bring back? Yeah. Uh, couldn't find a button. All right, um, Judy, do you have the changes in hand? I have them in hand, but I can't share them. But if it's just us, um, Brandt had some questions and we referred them to town council who, and I just remembered at 4.30 that we hadn't heard back from him. And I called the town offices and left a message for Brian. And unless somebody's got an email since then, um, I think we have to assume, well, we have no, no changes from town council. We've already approved them. Um, we could outline them for Mary, but I think it's pretty clear on the on the attachment. 
So I would think maybe we could just, the only thing we can do, unless somebody's had a change of thought on, on this, I would suggest that we formally vote them and prepare to send them to town meeting. And, and then if uh, town council has, has any changes to be made, then then we can hold another public here. If, if they're significant enough, Lynn, Lynn or Brian will opine on whether they're significant enough that we need to hold another public hearing or not. But we can do that sometime between now and June. I can live with that. You wanna move it then? I think we have to close the public hearing. Ah. This is, it's six this is like, just like the CPC public hearings. I, I think the longest one we've had was three minutes. Uh, it's it's 6.04, so I'm closing the public hearing. I'm really looking forward to the article about this in the Greenfield Recorder. We're hitting the, We're hitting the big time. Well, you want to be big time and make this motion? Uh, me. Uh, so I'm making a motion to approve the zoning bylaw changes as previously distributed. And they were up on the, they're up on the website for today's meeting. I, yes, Mary, if you have any questions about them, I'd be happy to answer them late, later. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> I, I will say that I sent specific invitations to the to the to the housing committee pointing out the the change in the housing in the accessory apartment and I sent an invitation to I sent a notice to the Ag Commission if they didn't want to get site plan review and and to the select board to say that we're doing this and it's a good chance for you to hear about them. And obviously everybody was entirely content with them, so. Okay, do I have a second to the motion? I'll second that. Harry's. And I, can, and I have confirmed that the, they are up on the Waitley Town website for this, for tonight's meeting, so. Yeah. It's a and legitimate I, And motion. on, I think the planning board page. Okay, roll call vote, Sarah. Hi. Tom. Hi. Judy. Hi. Brent. Hi. Don. Hi. Motion passes unanimously. And thinking about this, there's a, a couple more small tweaks I'd like to make to the um, uh, site plan approval um, form. I can't. Oh, to the form. Yeah. Um, just a couple of. The application right form. Now we, we list. Uh, conditions, but then we also list things that must be done in the future, and they're not really con um, conditions, and it makes it very difficult for me to sign off as as the chair. Um, on on the latest one, I just had to say agreed to by the petitioners because you know that they won't use. Uh, they're going to use uh, solar energy. They haven't done it yet, so I can't really approve it. So what I just put, um, the petitioners have agreed to do so. Well, subject to satisfaction. I, I could continue doing something. that. Well, maybe to discuss this, we need to... I'll, I'll mark up a thing and we'll bring it up to the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause I'm not sure what, I'm not, I don't have the form clearly in my mind to know exactly. Yeah, what we should proposing. maybe think about it. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll send it around for perusal before we, uh, before the meeting. So the next thing is Mustang. Anything else that I'm forgetting, Judy? <laughs> I don't think so. But... Thank you.
Nobody from Mustang joined us. Um, I got a call from Chris and um, since he ran through most of the changes last time. Yeah. Okay, now I'll see if I can see. No, maybe no. <clears throat> okay, is that showing up? Not yet. Yep. How about now? Yep. Okay. So we'd already seen uh, that there was more um, plannings out here that were required by the select board. They are going to remove these two buildings here. Uh, and the biggest change was that they're, hold on, this is the wrong one. Okay, so they, they showed the, the flood zones here. Uh, there's, there's the plantings and they're gonna add this um, head house off of the, this was like more like a road through here and um, expand their rainwater uh, irrigation room. And um, they're gonna add more mechanical space at the, uh, at the north end. So um, the yep. only thing that Chris thought it might be is is uh, lot coverage, but I don't see that those are going to affect um, the lot coverage in a negative way. And we do have a better uh, parking plan. Don, is this a new plan from the one we saw last time? Yeah, he's made a few more tweaks since then. They they did the head house addition and the uh, the rainwater irrigation. Is there a date? on there that I can refer to so we keep them straight in the minutes. Yes. April 4th, 2019. Wait a minute, there must be a, uh, an update on this. Hmm. Well, this one is dated April 4th, 2019. And the amendment date is not on there that I could find. Uh, but it's, I will, I will change the name from, oh, the name of it is Project Update, the PDF. So um, those are already in the- um, OneDrive. OneDrive. Okay. So um, I would move that we draft a letter um, to Chris um, uh, confirming that uh, the changes were approved. Don, maybe we quick question. Yeah. They're expanding mechanicals. Is there any in, because that is the place where there's one the closest a butter. So no issues with the mechanical rooms noise and what do they got in those? I was kind of wondering the same thing, noise, fumes, nearness to the, the wetlands. I was concerned about visibility if the barns come down because they've been screening a bit. Well, that'll change. Well, Don, could you scroll down a little or scroll so you can see the street? I'm sorry, I said down, I meant up. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the vegetation, the, the, the trees cover and stuff in here, um, you have to know the barns there to, to see them at this point. Yeah. I 
And across the street is the police station, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can try and give him Chris a call and see. Uh, I see electricians a little far from me. What's that? Weren't, weren't they moving the propane? Uh, they moved the propane out, out back here someplace. Doesn't look like it's on this. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. I don't think I got a letter here. No, that one. There is a, a plan revision letter in the OneDrive. Yeah, I'm trying to get to it here. There we go. Yeah, if you there put the, yeah, good. My head has. Didn't really mention the mechanical buildings. But nothing I see in the bulleted list looks of any concern. I think the, um, I don't remember, but it seemed to me that, that those mechanical rooms were on the update that he ran over last year in April. But, um, if you want, I can um, get answers to this or we can have him uh, show up on the 11th for just a quick answer to the questions. Well, we don't have anything that shows where the propane tanks are. I mean, they're increasing the propane tanks by the by a third, by, by a third. And they're not on, on that design, on the plan? They're increasing it by 50%, right? From eight to yeah, yeah, 12. I'm sorry. Not that I can see. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Nope, that's all I've got. Hmm. And what would be the planning board concern? regarding the propane tanks? Well, I guess visibility. Well, they're, they're yeah. gonna be out back here, so the only place you get visibility would be from the bridge. Does the fire chief have to sign off on those? I don't think so. Why are they increasing propane? The solar's not going to provide enough? Or just a good backup? Um, Didn't do my homework. I don't know. Hmm. Now, winter I operations. Really I don't really see any problem with this. And I'm gone. God damn it. No, you're, we still hear you, Sarah, cursing away. Sorry. Sounds like <laughs> yeah, I don't see what the issue is. Like, why would we need to endure more, more hearings about this, these changes? So what are we potential, are we voting on something here? Yeah, we have to vote that the changes are okay. We have to accept the changes. Mm -hmm. If they were severe enough, we could require another public hearing. I think I'll probably end up recu recusing myself only because I wasn't involved in the original you know, review of this whole thing. So, um, but based on what I'm hearing tonight, I just, I, I, I don't know why I would wanna not ex simply accept this. I, I meant abstain versus recuse. 
Well, you want to um, go ahead and talk about this again on the 11th? Who are you addressing that question to? Anybody. Yeah. I think it's okay. You know, what, what do we need to discuss more than we already have? Yeah. I will, when I write the letter to Chris, I will um, just state our concerns and then he can answer that letter. How does that sound? And remind me what our concerns are. Uh, the <laughs> the um, reason for the additional utility room, mechanical room, and where are the propane tanks? I don't really think either of those is relevant for the, the decision. Well, the propane yeah. tanks, yes. The concerns about the additional Mechanical room. Yeah, I, I don't think that's that's relevant. That, that noise would be. I, I that's what you meant about concerns. I'm sorry, I was thinking. Okay. Well, if, if if people think that that's a big enough issue, then then we shouldn't take a vote, and we should get an answer from him. If it's not an issue, we should just approve it and. And uh, you needn't write the letter. Yeah. I'm having a hard time imagining um, mechanicals, mechanical equipment associated with this operation that would create the kinds of noise and fumes and other things that we would be concerned about. My only thing is that is a particularly sensitive abutter historically. Um, and they were on board and they came to the site review, uh, the site walk when we were there. And they're, um, they're very positive at that point too. Right. So it's just, it, I want to kind of make sure they've been confirmed with again. Because I mean, that's where the change is in that direction. So I mean, if Chris says they're still on board and they know about this, that's probably fine with me. I'm going to move that, that we approve the changes. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got to talk to Chris. You're going to talk to Chris, and then we'll discuss it again. OK, I thought, what, all right. Right, I want to make sure Chris or they've talked to those neighbors. OK. About additional mechanical room and changes on the site. And Sarah, you're referring to 68 Christian Lane, is that correct? Yes, that the is northern. the only residential yeah. close, close abutter. The only other abutter is across five and 10. The 64. Oh, you're right. We do have those across the street there too. And yes, and those barns may actually, yeah, affect more the sight line to six, to zoo. Yeah. I think Don's right though that it is pretty hard to see those barns from. Yeah. But trees don't oh, stay there forever. Yep. Coming from someone on Christian Lane at the moment. <laughs> My sight lines are completely opened up. Hmm. So are we gonna then discuss this on the 11th of May? Yes. Yeah, I'm just looking at the street view and from in the fall when there's no almost no vegetation, you can not see the, uh, if you know the barns are there, you see them. Let me see what it looks like on Route 5. Where would we be? You see them from we yeah. do see them from Route 5. Yeah. We'll actually going to see them less from Route 5 if they put in, depending on the trees they put in or the plantings they put in. Well, they're not going to be using the, um, I think, the, the, that road for access. Yeah, you can definitely see those. Yeah. All right. Um, and then another thing I, 
I got a call about changing the greenhouses on Seven River Road. Instead of being individual, they want to group them together. And if you're familiar with the new greenhouses they put up um, in Wapping on Route 5, up in the, where the beyond the S turns, uh, just before you come into Old Deerfield, um, it's many peak roofs, but they're all made into a single building, and that's what, what they're looking at now. I'm just wondering uh, if we need to have them come talk about that and look over the. I, I think it would be a good idea to, for them to present that change myself. It makes me wonder about water and runoff. I didn't hear that. It makes me wonder about water and runoff and collection because one roof instead of it'll come off a lot. Well, it's going to be like some 10 or 12 roofs. Yeah, yeah I think we should yeah. see it. I think, okay. I think there's also issues with how this changes their air management and filtration within those greenhouses. Yep. That was my feeling as well. Okay. What else have we got on the agenda? What what <clears throat> were those things you were just mentioning? Those are questions that we're going to have them come in and talk about on the 11th. Yes. Were those okay? So you won't be asking anybody to contact Butters at this point. You'll just we'll put publish another agenda with this on it, and they should just come if, if they're interested. Is that how we're leaving it? I think so. That's how we've handled uh, updates too. Yeah. I, I just I'm just I'm just going to line out couple of things from before if as long as I understand what we're doing we're we'll we'll put this on the item on uh, the 11th agenda to revisit slightly okay you're talking about Mustang now right <sighs> yeah no. River Road. <laughs> seven, seven River Road I think that should go in the agenda for the 25th I kind of got lost on the Seven River Road. <laughs> um, what, is it, what is it that's going on at Seven River Road? The, the greenhouse is going to be. Oh, oh yes, yes. The, I am talking. Wasn't it Three River Road or? Three is the new one. That, oh, uh, there's two on River Road. <laughs> okay. oh, they're going to they're going to buy the um, repair thing. The gas. Uh, right, right. And make it into a distribution, a production kind of yeah. manufacturer thing, and that's the one where the shop is going to be number three, and the house is is already there, being lived in by the current owner, who's going to keep owning it and continue to live in it. And what's happening on seven? Seven we approved before, and they're changing the configuration of the greenhouses. Okay, and and that's. Um, who is it we, about? I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't have three. Seven three River. isn't formally in front of us yet. Yes, but Seven River Road, just refresh my memory. That's uh, de 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 debilitating medical condition. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> and we're asking them to come back on the 25th? Yep. Well, I got quite a to-do list here. Is this something that needs to be advertised or? Not yet. Is, is it something, well, is, I guess my question is, is no. not contacting somebody or how will they know? <laughs> no, we just, Don will ask them to come and present this and then we decide it will be just like tonight. We decide whether it's a significant enough change that we need to advertise it again or not. Okay. and. That decision will be made on the 25th. Yeah, from the description, I would think not, but but we may have other stipulations for them then, but I don't think we'll need to have another public hearing, but you never know. Okay, so that's regarding their changes. 
and as far as the last of uh, the last of the 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 thing where we were talking about are we concerned enough to have that was Mustang, right? To have them come in or just to have have them come in on the 11th or Don was going to ask Chris to talk to the abutters. That's not happening, right? They're coming in on the 11th. Well, we'll ask Chris if he, if the abutters are up, are okay with it. Okay. And to provide information on the noise level. Yeah. So they either will or won't be on the agenda they'll be a, they'll be on the agenda because we have to discuss it again okay so the, the they'll they'll answer don's request for information i'm just wondering if i'm supposed to be doing anything here um no. they will no. they'll, they'll have already read the questions that don's saying we still have about contacting abutters after the changes and then we'll have that to discuss on the 11th yep okay <laughs> And my understanding, Don, was you're going to have that conversation, collect information from them before our meeting on the 11th. They don't necessarily need to come to the meeting on May 11th and present. Uh, I, I think it would be better if they did come, because I didn't think we'd need to talk to Chris. OK. Uh, but uh, it's better to know than to assume. OK. So they'll be aware of the questions and there might be an option for them to share answers in advance of the meeting, but they'll come to the meeting and we'll be able to question them directly and then make a decision. We'll put them on the rack. Okay. And just for general information, um, the marijuana store down at, in the old Sugarloaf shop, um, it's, it's been approved as well as Mustang. Um, so they're, they're actually doing some work down at the Shuloaf shop to get ready to put in the retail store. Mm -hmm. You said as well as Mustang. Has Mustang been approved too? Yeah, they're the same. No. Uh, no, maybe not. No, the, the Sugarloaf shop is Toro Verde. Mm. Green but, Bull. Yeah, they, they had two names, but the other one wasn't Mustang. Okay. And an interesting aside, um, 29 Christian Lane, um, what was it 29 or 129? Anyway, um, our, our friend, the Lamas people in their brewery, um, one of the neighbors called me about uh, an accessory parting part accessory building going into uh, the old brewery and um, they don't have a building permit so I conveyed the same to uh, Jim Hawkins and uh, he wrote them a cease and desist order hmm. Hmm. that's Brent, that's one of the ones that we fought over for almost a year, a couple of years ago. Okay. Was that Another, Hitchcock? Yeah. Okay. Another interesting aside that is, is that DMTC has approached the select board about a host community agreement for a retail facility at the other building at Sugarloaf shops, yeah. what's, which would what's, seem to indicate two retail marijuana facilities in one location, which I'm not quite sure what's going on. Well, um, we, we need to maybe fine tune the, uh, the traffic regulations on that. I think we left it as needed, right? We've approved it, so the right. Toro Verde one. Right, but on that one, when they did the, the one um, done on the Hatfield Amherst line, they had a cop out there for 30 days, and uh, oh, well, that's what you mean. he absolutely wasted his time. But 
Um, I think the way we left the, the traffic situation was as needed rather than. Yeah. 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 I, I rather doubt that we'll wind up with two of them in the same place, but you never know. Are they doing putting a median down five and 10 there or some side of a suicide lane type thing on five and 10 right there? I don't know. I heard that from some neighbors of mine. Because they're definitely doing drainage along five and 10 there, all in front of the hotel and Dunkin' Donuts. But I didn't know if they were putting these, these people, and he's somebody, it, Michael Becta, he has quite some connections with some things still. And he said, um, yeah, they were putting something down the middle of the five and 10 there. Uh. traffic control type things all the way from the fire station down so interesting i'll have to invite michael to the next uh, board meeting is that it just before we break i want to just ask the board the question about this um thing on Saturday that came up today with uh, Sovereign. So do we all need to be there or um, like, what's the game plan? This would be the first time I've, I haven't checked my schedule to just make sure that I can get away for, for that period of time. So what's the protocol? Um, come if you can. Come if you can. Or if you want to, I mean, if you feel you know the site, I mean, sometimes it's a place that some of us are familiar with, some of us not. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, the idea is that you get to have some sense of a three-dimensional thing as opposed to two-dimensional one, sight sure. lines. Yeah, one of, the, one of the site visits that made a huge difference was um, as you go up North Street, after the Sanderson's, the road drops down into the floodplain for the Mill River. Mm -hmm. And on the plans, it doesn't look like there's much of a view shed there. But in actuality, just before you drop up down into the floodplain, uh, it's just a beautiful view. And uh, oh, yeah. so the site, site visit there, if you didn't know it, was uh, very informative. Okay. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Anybody yeah. ask anything else? Um, I, when I dropped off the plans this morning, Dawn, I opened all the mail and they are in one drive. Some of them are our own mail, some are postcards from Hadley, um, but I photographed all the mail that was in the box and I've uploaded oh, nice. them as pictures into one drive. So it's not the best format and I did not put them into a folder, but okay. I don't know if you want to, if we want to look at them in OneDrive. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, it was, that's funny, Sarah. I was just noticing a whole pile of JPEGs at the- What is all that garbage? Yes, <laughs> all my pictures. I think, I think we, there's just one- got thing. a mail folder in there, don't we? We haven't created one. I, I could easily create a mail folder and just put all the JPEGs into it. But the other thing is, usually we read it and recycle it. So do we just want to do that in this case? Three of them, I think, at least are from Waitley. So I think um, Don usually edits a little bit, which ones he thinks we need to see. Yeah. Well, if they've already gone past and it's not of any interest, it doesn't. No, there's some future ones. Future ones in Deerfield. A lot of uh, what changes in bylaws, both Williamsburg, Deerfield, Hadley. Hadley, they're now sending out postcards when they, for accessory apartments. I thought that was very interesting with the addresses on them. I got well, contacted. If they're all there, we can look at them at our convenience, right? Yeah, yeah. I got contacted by the guy who's doing the, what do they call them, ADUs? Yeah. Accessory dwelling units. Um, he was supposed to have a short 
virtual tour and I showed up for the tour and it had been canceled. So I don't know if they're going to rerun it. But if I get another one, I will uh, let everybody know about it. I don't know what, what good it will do, but evidently there is one in Waitley. Do you know anything about that, Judy? Yeah, that's why we changed the accessory bylaw. It's the one on Westbrook Road. So that's the one um, the, for the guy that's uh, handicapped? I don't know why it's, I think you said that I can't document that, but it's the one that the planning board, the ZBA approved. It probably is. There was one that was approved a couple of years ago. They never built it and then they came back again with a new plan and that was approved. That's the one you're talking about, Judy? What's the name on it? I don't know. It's on Westbrook Road. There haven't been. Oh, I, th I thought Don was looking. I think it was built in August. Um, it, it doesn't, it was, it was bought from this company. I know that it was pictures of it in the paper. I think I showed you a picture. I sent the link to the article when we first talked about revising the bylaw. Mm -hmm. All right, um, make a motion to adjourn. So move or approve or second. Second, second. Um, Brent? Yes. Don, yes. Tom? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Judy? Yes. The meeting is adjourned. Okay.